My dad is always complaining that I don't get him anything for his birthday, so happy birthday bud, I'm going to read three books you might like. The issue is that now I have to actually pick what those three books are. I have no idea. There are a couple of books on here that I think are definitely kind of in his roadhouse, and there are a couple of books in here that I think are definitely kind of not the things he wants to read. I'm going to go for a kind of thriller's vibe for this vlog. So let's see where episode two is going to take us. I'm going to have a look around these shelves and we'll get back to you then. We're good. We got them. So I've got three books picked up. I had four. I had a kind of a wild card. But I think I might leave that one for another day. So we've got three to go. We have got The Club by Ellery Lloyd, which I bought on the way back from a holiday to Mallorca last year in September. It's been on my DVR for about a year. Time to get it going. And then I've got two arcs that I was sent by the publishers. I have got In Her Place by Adele Coffey and I have got Somebody Knows by Michelle McDonough. I'm not entirely sure what happens in any of the three of these books, but I have got about six weeks to get all three of them read so that this video is ready for my dad. I have taken my makeup off after that video, but I asked my dad to pick one of the three books from the vlog to start off with, and he has said, Somebody Knows Sounds Interesting. So book one for this is Somebody Knows by Michelle Madonna. I'm going to be that person who reads it from the back. Oh, this is about um, an adoptive mother who is dying and her daughter, her adoptive daughter is a journalist. and. There is a body that is found in a bog in the middle of Ireland and it is somehow connected to this family. I am really interested to see how this one is actually going to go. I did know a small little bit of it before I went in. I think I had done it in a haul recently or I had talked about it in anticipated Irish book releases. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how Papa Polka Dot picked for his first book. I'm about halfway through Somebody Knows, and when I say halfway, I actually mean I'm about 60% of the way through. But I am enjoying this so much. I'm genuinely invested in what's happening in this book. Do you have a couple of qualms though? The thing that I am really enjoying about this book, first of all, is that it is set in Ireland. And not only that it is set in Ireland, but it is also set in Galway, which is one of my favourite, if not my actual favourite places in the entire country. So this is like being on holiday without having to actually spend any money to go back to Ireland. There's also a really great narrative running through the entire book. So this is about Cara, who was adopted as a baby and after the death of her adopted mother, decides that she's going to go and find out some more about her birth family, see if they want to get in contact with her. Around 2022, back in Ireland, the law was changed so that it was easier for people who were adopted to find out more about their birth families and to find out more about the circumstances of their birth. Everything was kind of shrouded in mystery for a really long time, mainly because of Ireland's prevalence of mother and baby homes. But in around 2022, everything started to open up a little bit more. Adoption records were made more publicly available and people started to actually find out things about their own past. I think this is really important, not only because it gives you a sense of where you actually come from, but because there are a lot of genetic disorders that you may have or a lot of illnesses that you may have that come from your family, it can be more difficult to treat them if you don't know what your genetics are. But that's beside the point. This entire book is about Cara finding out who her birth mother was and getting to know her birth family a little bit more and integrating herself with them a little bit. But there is a really big mystery surrounding her birth mother. Her birth mother is the Lucia Casey that was mentioned at the back of this book, whose body was found buried in a bog about 30 years before the book starts. I thought that that reveal would come much, much later on in the book. I knew it was very obvious that Lucia was Cara's mother, but I thought that that wouldn't be revealed to us until about the 200 page in, and we were, laying, we were going to be like laying down a lot of groundwork before we got there. But we got there a lot earlier than I thought, and it did bring the story in a little bit of a different direction to where I thought it was going to go. 
one gripe that I have with this, and I know that I said that it is set in Galway, one of my favourite places, but it's very heavily Irish. As I have explained to you, the law about the adoption records and their availability was changed in 2022, and that is brushed over in the book, but not very in-depth explained. And I feel like if somebody from outside of Ireland is picking up this book, which may happen because the international rights may be sold, if somebody from outside of Ireland is picking this book up, they're not going to intrinsically know what that means. They're not going to know, first of all, what the Oireachtas even is. The Oireachtas is the kind of umbrella term for Ireland's Houses of Parliament and the House of Senate. So they're not going to know what any of that means. They are going to have to do a little bit more research for themselves. Tying in with that, there is mentions of the Chew and Baby Home scandal, which is where a former mother and baby home in Chewman County, Galway, there was an unmarked gravesite found on the grounds of this former home, and it was actually in a sewer system. And the bodies of up to 800 babies and toddlers, up to around four or five years old, were found buried in this sewer system. It was a huge scandal in Ireland, and it really kick-started a lot of talk and a lot of discussions about the Magdalene laundries. And there was an apology made officially by the government about four or five years ago about it. But again, people from outside of Ireland are not going to intrinsically know that unless they have their finger on the pulse of Irish news, which isn't going to be a very prevalent thing. Not a lot of people are going to know what that intrinsically is. So you may need to just expand your explanation of that a little tiny bit more. Overall, great book. Do I recommend it? Yes. Do I think my dad would enjoy it? That's the main thing about this video. Yes, I think he would. I think he'd have a really good time with it. I am going to try and get this much of it finished. So this is how much I have left. I'm going to try and get this done by the end of the day. And then we're going to move on to book two in this. And let's see where that brings us. We we'll started off with the good news. I have finished uh, Somebody Knows. Hold on. Let me get it. I finished Somebody Knows. I have given this a four and a half. And I think that this would be my favourite book of August and I closed out the month with it so hard. I was really invested in this book the whole way through and then I got to about 50 pages or so left until the end of the book and I just could not put this book down. It was like it was sellotaped to my hands. The whole hijinks with Cara's birth family, as you get to know them a little bit more and as you get a little bit deeper in their psyche and find out what it is that their minds are like, it was genuinely gripping. I haven't read something that has taken me in as much as this in such a long time. It is also really weird that this is the first thriller that I have read all year. I looked back over my reading stats and this is the first thriller that I read in the entire almost nine months of 2024. That isn't usual for me because I do pick up a thriller now and then, but to go almost nine months without one, it's kind of a little bit long for me. So maybe that's why I enjoyed it so much. Maybe it was because it was such a departure from what I had been previously reading. It wasn't a romance and maybe I was getting a little bit oversaturated with those. It wasn't a non-fiction and I've read quite a lot of those. It wasn't a contemporary fiction or historical or literary fiction. Maybe it's just that it was such a different situation to what I had been reading previously that it just knocked it out of the park. Then I went on to the second book for this vlog and I am about 49-ish percent of the way through The Club by Ellery Lord. I wish I could tell you what's happening in this book, but I do know this is not one for my dad. My dad is not going to enjoy this one at all. It has the kind of vibe of The White Lotus in that it's a bunch of rich people stranded on an island where there has been a murder involved. You don't know who it is that's been murdered. You don't know why it is that they have been murdered. You don't know anything that is happening. You're just trying to piece everything together. And I'm going to be really honest with you. Piece everything together, I cannot. Because there's so many characters in here. And there's so much... Things are happening and no consequence to this story whatsoever that I'm kind of considering DNFing this. It's just not grabbing me in the same way that somebody knows did. It's not taking me in at all. There are a bunch of characters that I truly do not care anything about. There are so many things that have happened previously that are being brought back up that have nothing to do with the club or with the story of the island that it's on. The club is kind of a conglomerate of big nightclubs that all have a totally different theme. So you have the country club, which is set in the Scottish Highlands. You have got the island club, which is the one that the book focuses on, and it has just opened on a private island. You have got the Camden club, 
which is in the Camden area of London. You've got some really prestigious places that people want an invite to and are willing to sell vital organs to be in there. And at the start of the book, you are told how prestigious and how elite that this is. And there's people who are trying to blag their way onto the guest list, even though they were completely overlooked for any particular reason that they were overlooked for. There are a couple of characters in here that I am enjoying reading. I think it's Jess is her name, or Jessie. She is the head of housekeeping and she has been brought in and it's kind of intriguing me with her. But the rest of these people, I kind of don't care anything about. Not only is this not a book for my dad, I don't even think that this is a book for me. I don't think that this is one I want to continue. I'm going to give it another little while and maybe by tomorrow morning I'll have already made a decision. But I do have the next physical book and that one is the biggest one of all of them. I think this is about 380 something pages. Yeah, 384. This is in her place by Adele Coffey and it's set in New York. It's about a man named Justin whose wife Deborah is in a coma. And he meets Anne, who is sitting in a bar one evening. They have a conversation about how lonely they're feeling. Anne's husband has also passed away a couple of years ago. And they just want a little bit of companionship. They just want somebody that they can talk to and spend the evenings with. So they start dating. One day, Deborah comes around from her coma, which wasn't expecting to have happened. And Anne feels like she has to really fight for her place in Justin's life and keep their new relationship going. Look, I understand why you would do that i understand wanting to keep a new relationship going but i am very intrigued as to how this book is going to go it's written by an irish author and it's not set in ireland so i'm also wondering how that's going to be portrayed because i feel like american authors who set their books in ireland doesn't always work out so i'm hoping that the opposite isn't always the same but i'm gonna give it a try i'll get a little bit into it and i will tell you what i think about it it is the morning after the night before and i've had a thought about it and I am going to DNF this book. I'm going to DNF the club because I'm not looking forward to picking it back up. I am not anticipating getting on my lunch break from work today and then getting this book out and getting further into it and finding out what's happening to these characters that I kind of don't care about. I am looking forward to doing that for um, In Her Place. Didn't get a whole lot into it last night. I think I only read about five or ten pages before I just crashed. But I'm going to give it a little bit of time I'm going to see how I feel about it but I have a feeling that this one is going to be a little bit better than the club was mainly just because I'm vibing a little bit more with the writing style already I'm vibing a little bit more with the story maybe it's just because it's an Irish author and that is just working for me at the moment but there's something about this book that I want to keep reading even though I can't keep my eyes open. I just wanted to keep going with it. I never had that feeling with the club. I never had that feeling of, oh, I cannot wait for work to be finished so that I can get on a train home and read this book. Oh, I can't wait to have finished cleaning the house. I mean, I have always said that I can't wait to finish cleaning. But it was never in the instance that when I'm finished, I can sit on the couch with the club and read it. That was never the situation that I was in with that book. So... I'm going to practice what I preach and I'm going to stop reading a book that isn't working for me. I cannot begin to tell you how hot it is, but picture 34 degrees Celsius, which is about 90, 92 Fahrenheit. That's, that's how hot it is today. This is the warmest day of the week so far. And I think it's supposed to get warmer as the week and weekend continues. But that does not really stop me from reading on with In Her Place by um, Idel Coffey. I said at the start when I was giving you an update about this that I was having a good time and I did and then we kind of lost the dressing room a little bit. There are a couple of things in this book that I was worried was going to happen, mainly that it was an Irish author writing a book set in the US, was it going to be very US centric or was it going to be very Irish centric? And it's turning out to be quite Irish centric. For instance, those familiar with the US will know that they don't call it TK Max, they call it TJ Max. They will know that she's not your mom, she's your mom. They will know that you don't send your children to a creche, you send your children to a daycare. There's just these little inconsistencies that aren't working for me with this book. I am going to continue for a little bit longer. I think this is the one that my dad will not care about those little inaccuracies. The writing is okay. It's kind of plodding along for me at the moment. I'm on about page 40, so about 10 or so-ish percent through. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. I don't think I'm having such a good time with it as I was back when I started it. But let's just see what goes on. Finally, the last day of the massive heat wave that we've been having for the last 
two-ish weeks, I think, and I come to you with an update that I am gonna DNF in her place. There is just too much Irishisms in this. I think if we took those out, or if the book was set in Dublin, or Galway, or Cork, or Limerick, or anywhere in Ireland, it would be fine. It's just too much for me when the book is supposed to be set in America that we're having so many things that are inherently Irish put into it. Such as when somebody comes over to the house that you're offering them tea and biscuits. First of all, there's no real tea culture in America. It's a lot of coffee. Second, Americans don't call them biscuits. They call them cookies because they have a totally different thing for biscuits that look like what we would call scones. It just isn't working for me. I'm sure that the story is going to develop in a really interesting way because where I'm at right now is starting to get interesting. Deborah, who is Justin's wife, has just woken up from her coma and now Anne and Justin have to pretend that they're not actually in a relationship, that Anne is like the live-in nanny for their daughter Sophie and it's going to get complicated and it's going to get messy and I wish I was sticking around to see it but I just, I can't do it. There's just too much Irishisms in this for me for it to work. Overall, I think I had a kind of a mixed bag. I really started out on too high of a note and then everything kind of went downward hill from there. But hopefully these are books that my dad would enjoy. I don't think he's going to have the same problem with In Her Place that I do. I think he won't really mind that they're calling it TK Maxx because he's not big into that kind of area of culture. It will kind of go over his head a little bit that they're calling it tea and biscuits rather than coffee and cookies or whatever it is that Americans offer when you come to their house. It's just going to be a little bit of a culture clash for him and for me but I know that he will get invested in the story. That's three more books taken off of my physical DVR and two books that are actually going to go to my dad because I think that he's going to really enjoy them. If you stuck around to here and there's nothing that you'd really like to say but you want to let me know that you're here, why don't you just send me a birthday cake emoji so that I can send that on to my dad. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.